SRD Engineering in Bista. They've been going since 1989. 37 machines, give me a nod, 37. 37. Milling and turning, unsurprisingly. We're in a turning cell. Yep. Loads of citizens. Yep. Tell me, well, when you bought your first one. Okay, so the first one came in 2007, and that was off the back of really the recession and us trying to source work and find work. So I, the story was that the company was losing money, we had to try and find work from somewhere else, so I went on to websites and stuff like that uh, to try and source work. And um, I came across one company that was subcontracting a lot of work out, and I originally quoted on that job, and I got the price way out. We're talking <laughs> ridiculously, uh, ridiculously can, can we ask what? Yeah. So the, the top hats that I was quoting were just brass components, general parts, nothing special, and I was going in at sort of £2.50 each, and when the, they gave us feedback, because I hadn't heard anything for a couple of days, so they gave us feedback, and uh, they were giving me prices of about 25p. So obviously I hadn't been involved ever on sliding head technology. Or Not the most accurate then. pricing then? No, no, I wasn't going to win the work at that. So um, with a bit of communication from this uh, company, they told me to look at Swiss turning so that's exactly what I did so I got onto the internet and started looking um, and then that's when I contacted Star and Citizen and it really sort of snowballed from there really so I got them both to quote we sent the drawings over to this company and they gave us their cycle times we got the cycle times back we put them into our uh, quote system and then I was then able to generate prices of what they had given us more realistic pricing more realistic yeah um, it was it was very new to us so I didn't know um, yeah and that's basically what happened and with a bit of a negotiation with this company they gave us a purchase order that came over on the fax machine and and I was like well I need to buy a machine now so we started talking to finance companies and uh, and then it went from there and our first machine was delivered and it is still going strong now so, so 11 years ago it's interesting yeah. though it's only 11 years ago you found out about the Swiss sort of slide-head yes, lathe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so we've always been sort of, I suppose, very blinkered on just sort of the standard lathes, two-axis, three-axis lathes. We had sort of diverse a little bit in uh, sort of bar feed technology and stuff, because again, that was all new to us. We don't even run bar feed, so it was quite a learning curve, and we just did what we knew. So that was just top hats and washers. So it's been a great learning experience, but you've now got five uh, citizens it's four citizens wow. now okay. yeah so we've got three l20s and one uh, l32 um, it's not just about the machines taking a step back though because you know in the background yeah in the backgrounds as, as, as far as service is concerned um, so when we first started dealing with citizen they were really they was very supportive uh, of getting the machine in helping us learn the technology because my, my turner here that again he'd only been on standard lays with bar food so he'd never seen this sort of technology before as well so it was all very new to him so it was a, it was a steep learning curve but citizen were on the end of the phone and we got to know their application engineers really well and it, yeah, they, I mean, they were fantastic they were literally a phone call away email away and they were helping us and yeah and I hate to ask what about the salesman Salesman's all right, yeah. <laughs> he was, yeah, well, he's obviously done quite well. Yeah. So, <laughs> but you say in terms of you know even just simple solutions, you had some problems with corkscrewing. Is that right? Yeah. So, when you go down to smaller diameter bar, especially when because we buy it in ground material, um, and then we obviously bar feed in, and it was coming in at three to four meter lengths, um, obviously on our bar feeds. So when you go smaller diameter, basically what happens is it, it corkscrews materials through, and you can't push it through either. We have actually had instances where material is broken, where it's actually snapped the bars. Um, so again, our CNC Turner contacts his uh, citizen and just basically put a, a scenario to them and they help you out. Just a simple method like chopping the material in half and then that solves the problem instantly overnight. So Real simple solution, but yeah, just absolutely. with the help of a citizen. Again, yeah, because we, we, you kind of rely on their expertise because they know their machines and technically we don't. We're, we're learning their machines when, you know, so any sort of help that they can give us is, is where you pay your money for, isn't it? So. Now your latest acquisition, then the L20 yeah. LFE. Now you said off camera, yeah. game changer. Absolutely. So the LFE technology is, I wouldn't buy another machine without it. And that's purely because it's gone from being able to run a machine for like in a seven hour shift or eight hour shift, um, we're having to turn the machine off at the end of the cycle because obviously we don't want the material to bound up around the tools because that can effectively snap tools. Um, but also you can get problems in the swarf conveyors and in the swarf bins where it comes out really stringy swarf. Um, it can actually cut the machine out because the, the oils and that can't get back into the machine. So technically you can run out of oil. And also we've had a scenario also where the, we've come in the morning and the machine shop's been flooded because there's so much oil bound up in, in and it's just uh, overspilled. So with the LFV, what it allows us to do is chip the material. So with a, a certain job that we were running in nylon, um, it was a 10,000 off a month. 
we uh, are able to now run that through the night where we could only run it for about eight hours. So we're reducing for, from about three weeks down to about a week and a half. Um, so we can actually get a lot more capacity, a lot more work on that machine. So it's not essentially the cycle time? No, I suppose not. No, it's not. The cycle time is generally the same. With the LFV, you're only adding on a few seconds. So, for example, if you've got a minute run cycle, you might be at a minute and ten because obviously the, the, the tool pass when you're using the LFV is, is different. So it does take a very slight, but you, would, you don't notice it over a big batch, you know, but you gain, obviously, from running overnight an unmanned and lights out machine. Oh, it's security. Yep. Yeah, exactly. I've got one guy running four machines at the moment. You know, he is losing his hair a little bit, but he is, uh, you know, he is running four machines at the moment. So You said about LFV is going to chip, but I've had it, you know, not a bit of a nerd, but I've had a look yeah. in, the, in the swarf bin. It's not all chip, there's still yeah, normal swarf so, in there. So, I mean, if you have a look behind you, you've got the swarf behind you. So, we're, we're selective when we use LFV um, because if, if you're price sensitive, you need to be obviously time sensitive as well to get the price competitive. So, what you tend to do is you select when you use LFV, so when it aids you. Um, it can be when you're not needing the LFV to be running because obviously you need the time to run it when the swarf isn't going to be a problem. Like a simple example like spot drilling or something like that, you tend to run it without LFV, you might as well turn it off. Um, but then obviously when you're drilling in deep holes or something like that, or especially rough turning in large diameters and stuff, where you need the LFV to be chipping and working. But things like finish turning, if you're just doing skim cuts, you don't really need the LFV on. So you can be selective when you use it. Um, generally, you keep it running because it's uh, it does aid. So you say that then, is it easy to control to code? Um, yes, yeah. I mean, simple. Again, it's just working out the code. Once you know it, you, yeah, it's um, simple programming. Obviously, again, I refer to our operator where he has never had this technology before, um, and he has an absolutely no problem with it now. He's yeah, it's like reading a book. One other component you've got yeah. in your hand there, P PTFE, because yeah, that's a no so nice, easy material. It's not the nicest of machi material to, uh, to machine. Yeah, it's a very soft. It's stringy. Um, and it's inconsistent as well. So again, it's very reactive to heat, um, but because it is such a soft material, um, you could be running it and then an hour later, you could be getting different dimensions. So it's not, every time I give a job to the shop floor in PTFE, I do get a few groans. <laughs> but the LFV, perfect. With LFV is perfect, yeah, absolutely. It solves the problem, so yeah. Mark, I'm going to stop you there because okay. someone who didn't want to go on camera and was really concerned about talking, you've told me it's been an absolutely fantastic no story. Thank you very much. No problem, cheers.